All right, and we are back here on the GSMC Football Podcast. And for the third part of the show, we are going to now go through the early window games from Sunday. I'll go through them and uh, give you my thoughts on uh, each of them. So let's start off with the Packers and the Rams. So Matthew Stafford did not play in this game. Brett Rippon got the start, and the Rams just could not get anything going on offense. They were terrible. Um the Packers, you know, obviously they were in desperation for a win, and they got it, winning 20-3 to over the Rams. So, of course, you know, last week I, I picked the Vikings, or no, I picked the Packers to beat the Vikings. Then I didn't pick the Packers this week, and, of course, they, that's when they get their win. I just really didn't trust them. I was like, listen, like, you know, the, the offense can't move the ball in the first half. I mean, I, I thought maybe the Rams, you know, being the better coach team, I thought even with Brett Rippon starting, you know, I, I thought that they would still maybe come out with a win, but that but that wasn't the uh, that wasn't the case here. That was not the case here, as uh, the Packers they end up getting the win. Like I said, twenty to three. Uh, Brett Rippon thirteen of twenty eight, one hundred and thirty yards, no touchdowns, eight yards. Cooper Cup was their leading receiver. He had two receptions for forty eight yards. Rams just could not get anything going offensively. As for Jordan Love, he was decent, 20-26, 228 yards, one touchdown, no interceptions. Packers ran the ball for almost 200 yards. Aaron Jones finally had a good game, uh, 20 carries, 73 yards, and a touchdown. Uh, Luke Musgrave, he scored his first career touchdown, three receptions for 51 yards um, on the day. And the Packers get to 3-5, and five, and their next game is against the Pittsburgh Steelers in Pittsburgh, two offenses that struggle to move the ball. So we will... Uh, We'll see what happens there. Um, so now we move on. Vikings and the Falcons. So what was interesting about this game was Jaron Hall got the start for the Vikings. Josh Dobbs obviously was acquired at the trade deadline. But he was not going to start because obviously, you know, you want to give him an extra week, let him learn the playbook, let him, you know, get acclimated. And... Um, he got thrown into the fire because Jaron Hall actually left the game with a concussion earlier in the game. So Dobbs came in, and the Vikings actually ended up winning 31-28. Um, he went 20-30, 158 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions. Uh, he also had a rushing touchdown in this game, ran the ball for 66 yards. He was their leading rusher. Alexander Madison, he had 44 yards on the, on the ground. Cam Akers had 25. Uh, TJ Hawkinson was the leading receiver. He had seven receptions for 69 yards. Um... Yeah, I mean, the Vikings get the win there. And Taylor Heineke got the start for the Falcons. He went 21-38, uh, 268 yards, one touchdown, one pick. Uh, B. John Robinson, only 51 yards rushing. Tyler Algeo, 39 yards rushing and a touchdown. Interesting uh, with B. John Robinson, the Falcons, for some reason, Arthur Smith, for some reason, just does not use him. And, you know, it leaves a lot of people, like, questioning, like, what is going on there? Um, John U. Smith was their leading receiver. He had a big touchdown in the game. He had five receptions for 100 yards and a touchdown. Um, yeah, but uh, the Vikings get the win with De Josh Dobbs. He had to learn. He had to do the cadences on the side. He was do practicing his cadences on the sideline, taking snaps from the center of the Vikings. And it was just like it was crazy that he had to learn that on the fly. I mean, it was like Baker Mayfield last year being you know with the uh, you know with the Rams for a second, and then all of a sudden he's got to start. And he ended up winning. Josh Dobbs gets the win. Um, they improved to five and four. The Vikings. They play the Saints next. Falcons drop to four and five. Uh, but injury news: Cam Akers he tore his Achilles on the opposite leg that he broke uh, or tore his Achilles on. Um, so I mean that's just devastating news for him. And you know he's a tw I think he's 24 years old. Um, so it, it that's I mean just devastating news for him because he was good last year. You know coming off of his Achilles from. You know the previous uh, previous season, uh, but yeah, it's uh, you know devastating news there. So it was on the opposite leg uh, of the Achilles that he tore up previously. So um, you know, just devastating news there. But um, you know, you hope for the best. But a lot a lot of lower leg injuries, and we'll get into that. Get into another one uh, in the uh, in the final segment here. Um, so now we move on. Uh, Ravens all over the Seahawks, 37 to three. I, I mean, I don't really know what else to say about this game. The Ravens dominated this game from start to actually the game was scoreless after the first quarter, but then the Ravens outscored the Seahawks 37 to three in the final three quarters. 
Uh, the Seahawks only scored in the second quarter. Uh, Lamar Jackson, uh, in terms of the stat sheet, he didn't light up the stat sheet, but was efficient, 21-26, 187 yards. Um, he ran the ball for 60 yards. The Ravens in total actually almost ran the ball for 300 yards, 298 yards rushing on the day. Um, their leading rusher ended up being Keaton Mitchell. Uh, he had 138 yards on the ground with a touchdown. Gus Edwards had 52 yards and two touchdowns. Justice Hill, 40. Uh, Tyler Huntley actually came in through a touchdown pass to Odell Beckham Jr., and it was actually Odell's birthday uh, on Sunday. And that was his first touchdown as a Raven. Uh, the leading receiver was Mark Andrews. I mean, there's, I mean, come on, let's be honest. There's no surprise there. Um, but, yeah, uh, the Ravens, they get the win, 37-3. Geno Smith, 13-28, 157 yards, no touchdowns and a pick. Uh, the Seahawks only ran the ball for 28 yards because they were down the whole time. Ja Jackson Smith and Jigba. Uh, he was their leading receiver, 63 yards. DK Metcalf had one reception for 50 yards. Tyler Lockett, three for 32. Listen, G what Geno Smith has done with this team, it's been a great story. But I think ultimately, like, if Seattle wants to get back to being, like, an elite team, uh, they're going to need an upgrade at quarterback. Because they have the roster. Um, but I, I don't think Geno Smith is a guy that's going to take this team to the next level. I think he is a solid I, – I think he's been solid for Seattle – these last two years as a starter but in the grand scheme of things i don't think this is a guy that's going to lead this team to a super bowl i just don't so i, I think seattle's going to need to upgrade a quarterback now seattle i think will be a playoff team ultimately but you know i i don't see this team you know especially going on the road against some of these better playoff teams in the nfc i just don't see them doing that and i mean you and again it also shows you how good the ravens are um Another blowout win against a, an NFC team that's a playoff team. Uh, they are really good. They are really good. They are a top team right now in the NFL. Um, their defense has been playing well. They're running the football effectively. Lamar Jackson's healthy, playing well. This this team's going to be tough to beat. This team is going to be tough to beat. Right now, I look at them, the Chiefs, and the Bengals as the top three teams in the AFC. Um, I still would put the Chiefs ahead. Bengal, uh, Ravens I would put ahead of the Bengals as of right now just because of the record-wise, and they already beat the Bengals. But we'll see what happens when these two teams meet in a couple weeks. Uh, then we move on to the Cardinals and the Browns. And I did listen to this game on Sunday, and, man, I mean, I just – I really wish I didn't. Those are those are some – those are four hours I'm not going to be able to get back. Um the Browns winning 27 to nothing. Uh, Clayton Toon got the start for the Cardinals. Kyler Murray actually will be starting next week, so that's good. They'll be getting him back. But Clayton Toon just couldn't get anything going. 11 to 20, 58 yards, no touchdowns, two picks. Uh, the leading receiver was Marquise Brown with 24 yards. Uh, Deshaun Watson, they they were saying how on the deep balls he was he was good, but it's just the, some of those uh, you know those short routes. You know he just he was not accurate. Um, and he did get bailed out. One of his touchdown passes got deflected up in the air, and Amari Cooper caught it for a touchdown. Uh, Deshaun Watson went 19-30, 219 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions. Uh, Jerome Ford was their leading rusher, 44 yards. Uh, Kareem Hunt had a touchdown in this game. Uh, Amari Cooper had five receptions for 139 yards and a touchdown. David Njoku had four uh, receptions for 26 yards and a touchdown. Uh, but, yeah, the Browns all over the Cardinals. Um, some of these games I'm going to like cover more individually during the week just because there's you know some st stuff I want to talk about with that. Uh, one of the best games of the day, Texans-Bucks. Texans winning 39-37 in a shootout. C.J. Stroud, 30-42, 470 yards, five touchdowns, no picks. I mean, he was awesome in this game. Baker Mayfield, 21-30, 265 yards, two touchdowns, no picks. Bucks lose another game. That was a heartbreaker for them. They've lost four in a row. Texans now get back to 500, and then they play the Cincinnati Bengals next week. So that is going to be a great game to keep an eye on. Um, but we will talk about this game more uh, during the week. Um, then we got the Patriots uh, and the Commanders. Commanders winning 20 to 17. Uh, Commanders improved to four and five, and this is after trading. Uh, you know their better defensive lineman. Um, Sam Howell, 29-45, 325 yards, a touchdown, and a pick. Uh, the Commanders ran for 124 yards on the ground in this game. Uh, Terry McLaurin, of course, was the leading receiver here. Um, and then as for the Patriots, I mean, Mac Jones, listen, the Patriots had a chance to go down the field and, and win the game like they did against Buffalo, and Mac Jones threw a pick. 
Uh, he went 24 of 44, 220 yards, one touchdown, one pick. Ramondre Stevenson had a 64-yard touchdown run, so that was big. And I thought, oh, yeah, the Patriots should win this game, but that was not the case. Um, to Mario Douglas, he was their leading receiver, five receptions for 55 yards. But, yeah, Patriots dropped a two and set. Excuse me. I mean, when did you think you were going to see that? Um, so, yeah. And then, finally, you got the Saints and the Bears. Saints winning 24-17. to I think they forced, like, five turnovers in this game. And I lost this game in the spread pool. I should have won because they had so many chances to go up by multiple scores. And I thought they were going to, but I had a feeling that they were going to miss the field goal, and that's exactly what happened uh, towards the end. But, yeah, they win. They improved the 5-4. and four. They play the Vikings next. And the Bears, they dropped the 2-7. and seven, And they will be playing the Panthers on Thursday night. And who knows if Justin Fields is going to play in that game. But, um yeah, uh, that's the Thursday night game there. So that's all the uh, the early window games. So with that, we are going to take our final break of the show. And then when we come back, um, I will then uh, go over the, uh, the late window games. I'll recap all of those. And then that will be it for the show for today. And I, once again, have a an eye. Oh, because you know what I did? Because I copy and pasted it um, when I was setting it up. Yeah, I mean, I was scrambling to get this show out because, obviously, uh, you know, things didn't go the way you want them to. But, uh, you know, because we had, you know, stuff going on today to kind of fix it. Um, that's why we started late. So, obviously, I'm scrambling to get everything set up. So, that's why things are maybe seem like they're in disarray. Um, but when we get back from our final break of the show, we will then uh, recap the late window games. And that'll be it. So, stick around. And we'll be right back here on the GSMC Football Podcast. <laughs> 